The Wisconsin Badgers basketball team is making moves in the transfer portal. Yeah, yeah, let's let's talk about it because there are guys moving in. Hopefully, there are guys moving in and there are definitely some guys moving out and we got to break it down and and we'll we'll feed you the red meat too. We'll we'll talk a little Greg Gard here too because I know I know you want to know what's going to happen. What's going to happen with the Wisconsin Badgers head basketball coach and we're going to break it all down here. Good morning, and thank you for enjoying it with a six-pack, the Scotty Six-Pack, the only podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports with you six days a week. I'm your host, Kedrick Stumbrus. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kedrick Stumbrus, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six-Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports. We're trying a little bit of different things here today, a little new camera angle situation, not wearing the headphones with the guest absent. And and trying something a little bit different here um, as we talk Wisconsin Badgers basketball for the first time in, in quite some time. Because, look, we, we had to flush it out of our system a little bit after the loss to the James Madison Dukes had to flush it out of our system because there was just frankly nothing good about that game. There's, there was not any real positive takeaways from a game in which you come out and just get blitzed by, by a team that played its best game all year, quite clearly, going downhill, beating you up. And sure, there is something to tease out there about Wisconsin and it getting beat up that way. But I don't think Wisconsin is so much worse than Duke this year, the, the Duke Blue Devils Duke, that the way Duke manhandled the James Madison Dukes says a lot about Wisconsin as a team and its performance in that game. Wisconsin didn't perform well in that game. That is, that is to be sure. But I think more of that win is on James Madison having, having its day. So let's talk Wisconsin as, as it is now, as it moves forward in this roster search, uh, because Wisconsin is going to have to make some, some new minutes available kind of, uh, to to some new players. And it all starts with the headline of the day on Sunday evening. Uh, that being Connor Asijan heading to the transfer portal. And I have a piece up on Asijan's transfer to Badger Notes, or on Badger Notes. That's linked to the podcast description as always. But we're going to talk about most of what is covered in that piece here because... I was maybe too critical of Connor Asijan this season. When it comes to the, the flurry of debate that was had among the general Wisconsin Badgers commentariat this season, thinking back to December, January, about Connor Asijan's minutes. And yes, there was some conversation that still trickled in throughout February and March. But most of the conversation had been had and done, and there was nothing new to say after January had wrapped. Because Connor Asijan's early injury really derailed his entire season. It's not the only thing that derailed his entire season, though, and that's important to think about. Look, when you get knocked out of the rotation that early, Connor Asijan was already sent to the bench to start the season as AJ Storr started in his place. And I don't necessarily think that was a, a wrong decision. Especially with the gift of hindsight, right? But once that happened, AJ Storr was able to take a dominant share of those minutes. Not just starting minutes where Storr started, but he was going to play something around a 60% to 40% share of Connor Asijan minutes. Although, of course, they definitely play different positions, definitely play different roles in this team. But you have that happen. A AJ Store shows his dominance right out of the gate and, and earns a trust in Greg Gard because although Store's defense was suspect at times this season, he brought more of a scoring punch to Wisconsin than Connor Asijan did to make up for it. Then you have the emergence of John Blackwell. John Blackwell really, really altered the trajectory of Connor Asijan's 
season. You have a freshman who cannot just bang threes like Connor Asijan, but can also drive the lane incredibly well. Connor Asijan has some of that in this game, but it dropped off this year. Plus, he's a better defender than Connor Asijan. I, I think John Blackwell is a plus defender on the floor. At least if he wasn't this past season, he will be now. He had some tough defensive assignments down the stretch where he looked a little bit out of sorts. Uh, but really, John Blackwell is positioning himself to potentially be the leading scorer on this team next season. And I've been saying that for a few weeks now. Of course, the injury to Kamari McGee opened up some backcourt minutes for, for Connor Asijan. But once McGee returned, those minutes were all but gone. Connor Asijan did not play and not due to injury in Wisconsin's final three games of the season. The Big Ten Tournament semifinals, the Big Ten Tournament final, and the NCAA tournament game against the James Madison Dukes. I was maybe overly critical of Connor Asijan this season. I, I wrote a piece that some, some thought was kind of nasty. But at the time that I wrote it back in uh, December, it was warranted. He was not hitting threes at the clip that you would expect him to. And even if he had been hitting them very well, you had other players on the court who could hit threes. AJ Stewart can shoot the three incredibly well. John Blackwell can shoot the three incredibly well. When Max Klesman is on, he is draining threes. And all three of those guys do something else with their game that Connor Asijan doesn't. Some of that's on the defensive end. Some of that's on the offensive end. But when the number one thing you have is hitting the three, and Greg Gard said in press conferences with the media, the film is out on you. You're not going to be able to just go out there and bang threes. You have to do something else with your game. Unfortunately, Connor Asijan not only didn't do something else with his game this season. He also wasn't banging threes. He shot nearly 36% from beyond the arc last season. This season, however, he shot just over 30%. Quite a significant drop off. And he was shooting less than 39% from the field overall. Not great for a guy only taking, you know, a shot every game that he appears in was not the ideal scenario for him. And yes, of course, there is the conversation about if Connor Asijan had played more, would he have gotten into more of a rhythm? Would he have been able to snap this funk earlier? Would he have been able to feel like he did not have to come in and perform immediately to prove his worth to Greg Gard? That's fair, but in Big Ten play, you simply can't get the benefit of the doubt. The stakes are too high. And the stakes were quite high for this team this season that had a legitimate shot at winning the Big Ten until February. The stakes were too high. And that's where I think the, the injury early in the year really derailed Connor Asija. That's not the only thing, though. Because if you evaluate his season as a whole, and, I, and I'm pulling some numbers from Ken Palm right now, he didn't perform in the way that justified him staying on the court, even if you take out the three-point shooting performance. E even if we say, all right, over a law of averages, Connor Asijan's three-point shooting from this season, which was quite low, to Connor Asijan's three-point shooting from last season, which was pretty high, they're at least going to meet in the middle there, and, and you're going to find a 33% three-point shooter. At least, right? Probably better. But the rest of Connor Asijan was clearly not up to par. And it's not just the watch the film and, and you'll see it on defense. When he was out there, he was clearly getting burned on defense and is borne out in the numbers. Per 40 minutes last season, Connor Asijan committed two and a half fouls. Per 40 minutes this year, 
he committed four fouls, a full increase of one and a half fouls. And that's with playing fewer minutes. So maybe there is some, they go right at him on defense. So he's in there for one possession, picks up the foul and dips. And that obviously does, <laughs> does a number on your per 40 numbers. But when he was in there for offensive possessions too, he wasn't getting to the free throw line nearly as much. His free throw rate was significantly down. His fouls drawn per 40 minutes was significantly down. And that's not without him trying to take advantage of his opportunities on offense while he was there. The bottom line with Connor Asijan is this. He didn't play particularly well on defense this season. He didn't shoot the three particularly well this season. And he wasn't a big enough threat inside of the three-point line to make much of a difference there either. Blame Greg Gard. Blame Asijan's injury. Blame Asijan's play. It's probably some combination of the three. I do think Connor Asijan is a power conference player in some capacity. Um, I don't necessarily know that it's a, a, a starting capacity, at least not with the way that he plays defense right now. Maybe if he goes to a program where they don't really ask him to play defense, this is a different question. But with his offensive limitations, that at least that he showed this season, that there's certainly some flash there for, for someone to capture. But I think at the power conference level, it's probably in a bench capacity. And he, he's going to get that opportunity. There, there is reportedly mutual interest between he and the Michigan Wolverines. Dusty May took that job recently. Uh, <laughs> friend, friend of the show and contributor over at Maze and Brew, Kellen Voss and I joked uh, that he, he'd be an interesting get for the new Michigan regime over there. And I think he he would excel there. I, I don't know exactly what's happening. That that is a roster that is is going to need to be rebuilt from the questionable fashion in which uh, one Juwan Howard left it. But that that's the big departure for the Badgers out of the transfer portal. Former walk-ons Ross Can Candelino and Luke Hartle are also making their way out seeing what they might find for playing time and, and a scholarship, I would imagine, elsewhere. Hope the best for them. Um, and and this is where I, I do want to have some of the great guard conversation, which is that I don't want to have it. I, I think th this is not to say, this is not to poo-poo on anyone saying we need to have the conversation. I my my reaction piece up on Badger Notes to the James Madison loss was it is time to start asking hard questions about Wisconsin basketball. I don't know that right now is the right exact moment in, in terms of the day this show is dropping, right? We are in a, a a larger moment in time that we should be having these conversations. But today, it's not happening today. There is some way in which the Greg Gard conversation is both too early and too late. And I'll start with too late. Too late because if something were going to happen, I firmly believe that it would have happened already. Right. These coaching changes happen fast. They happen furious. And you need that expediency in the age of the transfer portal to either keep your roster together or give your program the best shot at rebuilding its roster for the next season. And no, you don't make moves solely based on your roster for the next season or your recruiting class for the following year or what have you. However you want to, you know, spin that conversation. You don't do that because the long-term uh, outcomes are just too important, but you have to give some consideration to the timeline at which you make those moves, given the fact that you can make significant differences to your roster in one off season. Danny Sprinkle, who is the head coach at Utah state played against the Purdue Boilermakers in the round of 32 in the NCAA tournament this weekend. 
his roster returned zero points. He was a first year coach at Utah state. He had to bring in an entirely new roster and he was re able to rebuild it into an NCAA tournament team in the mountain West conference. That was uh, maybe the sixth best, best conference in college basketball this season, certainly performed like a power conference in the regular season. If you're going to make a move, you make it already so that you give yourself yourself a shot at a Danny Sprinkle like outcome. So in one sense, it's too late to talk about the Greg Gard conversation. In another sense, it's too it's too early because if a move is going to be made, it is going to be shocking and surprising, and there will be ample time to react to it, and it will be well worth reacting to it then. But right now, in terms of just having a larger conversation about Greg Gard, I think we should have it. But the main points that make that conversation what it is stem from differences in expectations for the Badgers basketball team and differences in expectations of what is possible, what is probable, and what is just a bad roll of the dice in March Madness some years? And those are things that are hard to change people's minds on. So I'm going to hold off on some of the Greg Gard conversation for now. Look, there might be too much that happens between now and November, and we never quite get around to it. We'll definitely get around to it by November and have a conversation about what guard has to do to keep his job following next season, because I do think that it's firmly on the table. It was firmly on the table this season. I think if they would have missed the tournament for a second year in a row, I do not think he would have been back. But right now, a move isn't going to be made. If it will, it will be incredibly surprising, and we'll talk about it. Um, but let's talk about who Greg Gard, as the head coach of the Wisconsin basketball team, might be getting in the transfer portal, bringing them to Madison. Uh, because there are a pair of names that I think are very worth thinking about right now. The the two main portal targets, I, I guess we, we could call them, for, for Wisconsin, at least the two that I find the most interesting, are Frankie Fiddler and William Kyle III. The two are the most interesting because they are both all Summit League prospects. They are also high school teammates with a certain Wisconsin Badger. Now think about the geographic region that the Summit League exists in uh, for all of you mid-major college basketball fans. It goes, if, you, if you could think about it. Well, William Kyle III comes from South Dakota State. The Jackrabbits. He was the Summit League Defensive Player of the Year. Frankie Fiddler played at Nebraska Omaha. Have you figured out the Wisconsin Badger yet? It is one Chucky Hepburn. High school teammates with both William Kyle the Third and Frankie Fiddler. And William Kyle the Third, I think, is an incredibly interesting prospect because it gives Wisconsin something that it did not have last season in terms of a a real rim protector. Stephen Crowell, for everything that he is, is simply not a, a rim protecting center, and that's fine. Uh, I don't necessarily mind it, given the other things that he does give you. Now, William Kyle, who has who has some eligibility remaining too, uh, I think is the the big draw with him is that he has only played two seasons of college basketball. He has a, a full two years of eligibility left, so he could slide in to to a front court position alongside uh, a Nolan Winter, not just this upcoming season, but the next upcoming season as well. Uh, he, he's top 100 in the country in, in block rates, according to Ken Palm, and doesn't commit a lot of fouls, and he sure does draw a lot of fouls. Uh, man, man can get to the line, and you know he, he's not 
He's not a stretch forward. Uh, has not shot a three in his career, but he would really bring an element of rim protecting defense to this Wisconsin team that I think would be welcome while filling a, a hole by left by the departure of Tyler wall. That would be an, a, a matchup challenge for other teams. Uh, because of his way that he can defend around the rim, but play through the post that I think is different than a traditional center. Uh, so you, although he played center at South Dakota state, I think he could play on the, f on the floor with Nolan Winter or Steven Crowell very well in his first season with the Jack rabbits. He played more of that four role. Uh, and, and I think he's better suited for the four than the five takes a lot of twos makes a lot of twos. He would be really good there. Uh, Frankie Fiddler is the other player from Omaha who is coming with a higher pedigree. He is a guard, more of a wing out of, out of Omaha, who is receiving a lot of transfer portal attention. And Wisconsin is going to have to beat out some, some good teams in order to get him in Madison. But he, he posted on his Instagram story, a, a photo of him, Chucky Hepburn and Frankie Fiddler all, all playing together in high school. And you, and you wonder if Wisconsin can at least be competitive putting together a, a package for Frankie Fiddler that Fiddler would be willing to make a little bit of sacrifices elsewhere uh, to go back and, and get, get the guys back together. <laughs> uh, look, he was Omaha's most important player on that team last season. He can shoot the heck out of the three. He, he shot nearly 37% from three last season. Uh, he, he's an incredible free throw shooter. Gets to the line quite a lot as well. And he doesn't turn the ball over. He would be a really good addition on the wing that has the potential to pack some scoring punch that would be left by potential other departures for Wisconsin. I think the pairing, I think the trio of getting the, the Bellevue kids back together would be a welcome addition for, for Wisconsin basketball. And, and the situation there is something to monitor. If you would like to know more about Frankie Fiddler and William Kyle the uh, third, I did not write them, but you can find some great pieces over on Badger Notes written uh, to learn a little bit more about their game. Uh, you can find uh, head over to my link to work in the podcast description on Badger Notes, and you will be able to find uh, great other basketball articles detailing Wisconsin's transfer portal targets, including the those two. And maybe, maybe getting the band back together, the Bellevue band back together for Chucky Hepburn, William Kyle, the third and Frankie Fiddler. Uh, that's going to do it for today's show. One thing I didn't really realize uh, until I kind of hit record here was we're, we're two days away from Milwaukee Brewers opening day in, in New York it, it, against the Mets. And I'm going to opening weekend. And I really didn't realize that it was actually so close. Uh, so we're, we're going to have to bring in someone to help us talk about the Milwaukee Brewers because there's been a lot of changes to that roster, changes to that coaching staff over the last few weeks, months. Uh, and that opening day roster, I think, is going to look quite a bit different than it did last opening day. So we're going to try to bring somebody in to talk uh, Milwaukee Brewers this week. And after that, we'll, we'll keep you posted on transfer portal news. Get to start talking some NFL draft stuff as we move forward as well. The draft is a month away. So really looking forward to that. But as always, stay tuned to the feed to listen to the only six days a week podcast talking all things Wisconsin sports here on the Scotty Six Pack. Thank you for listening. I've been your host, Kendrick Stumbers. You can find me on the website, formerly known as Twitter, at Kendrick Stumbers, and follow the podcast at Scotty Six Pack for the latest updates in Wisconsin sports while you are here.
If you're listening this long, clearly you like the show. Uh, leave a review, five stars, kind comments on your podcast platform of choice, Spotify, Apple, or you can watch the show on YouTube, youtube.com slash at Scotty Six Pack. If you're listening there, watching there, hit the subscribe button, smash that like button. And let me know in the comments, who do you want the Wisconsin Badgers to go get in the transfer portal? What are your thoughts on Connor Siegen's departure? I think people have a lot of strong thoughts about it. Uh, we'll, we'll talk to you all very soon on Wisconsin.